Well, the the oboe it's a it's a haunting sonority. It's it's a it's a unique voice inside the orchestra. It is very human and sort of distant at the same time, and it's an intriguing sound. Good. Yes, that's very good. Very good. The necessity to focus intently and practice through repetition to gain skill and mastery on the oboe can't be taken lightly if you want to go far in the profession, but at the same time you can't ignore the broader implications of what you're doing. It's not just about the instrument, um, it's about music and art, society and culture. I try to convey music to students in a way that is very at once professionally specific but also has broader, deeper implications so that they'll have a lifelong, deep relationship to it that's very satisfying. I come from a long line of music professors. My father was a college music professor, as was his father and his father before that. So there's fourth generation. So I feel, I feel very much at home here doing what I'm doing. And I think a lot about schools of playing and how they develop and are transmitted through successive generations and I'm definitely trying to do that with the students here, trying to give them the tradition that I was handed and move it forward. Andantino, it has some motion to it. You don't want to, it's not fast. My own path on the oboe began when I was 16. I left home in Lincoln, Nebraska to go to Philadelphia to study with Richard Woodhams, the yeah. principal oboist there. And eventually ended up at the Curtis Institute where I finished my education with him and was very fortunate at that time to um, be able to sub in the Philadelphia Orchestra as a student, which really cemented for me the fact that I wanted to be in an orchestra. So I came to the English horn actually professionally quite late. I didn't get my first job um, in the Cincinnati Symphony until I was 30, and that was an English horn job. But up until then, I was primarily thought of myself as an oboist and um, spent many summers at the Marlboro Music Festival and I freelanced in New York for some years as an oboist. And then when I pursued the English horn, ironically, it gave me a great perspective on American oboe playing. After I was in Cincinnati for three years, I went to the Metropolitan Opera in New York. And during the time I was there, there were four principal oboists, <laughs> um, one who's now principal in Chicago, one who's principal in Boston been very fortunate to have um, a direct experience um, sitting next to the major oboe players in the United States and uh, it's given me a very good perspective on my own training and the different schools of thought. During their lessons, there's a course of study that focuses on the basic principles of wind playing and music making on the oboe. But then I'm always curious about how they're taking what they learn and fitting it into the ensembles. And I try to go to as many performances as I can to hear the students in context. And they come to as many performances of mine as they can. And I ask them what they think. And so it's, a, it's definitely it's a two-way street here. After having secured my own place in the profession, um, it became very exciting for me to help younger players do the same. And I was very fortunate to have the types of players come to me who were really hungry and really gave it their all. And I helped a lot of people on both instruments get jobs in, in some major orchestras, which is very satisfying for me.